young generation at the moment for me are the most unprejudiced of all generations ever born. And if they can become ambassadors for why we need to keep moving forward and never return to a world where you aren't free to be yourself, then I think that will be a powerful piece of advocacy that I uh, would be very proud if my policeman even contributed to it in the tiniest possible way. Congratulations on this film. I enjoyed it so much. Thank you. And of course, it was a novel before it was a film. What did you love most about this story when you first read it? And what was your end goal when you decided to adapt it into a movie? I think the thing that appealed to me most uh, is the idea even that I could bring some a sort of personal voice beyond just the um, director's voice uh, making a movie, but bring something personal to it. I mean, I was born into an England uh, where the law was as it was at the beginning of this film, I'm afraid to say. And I grew up uh, as a young boy before the law was changed. And then after the law was changed, there was at least a generation of prejudice to have to deal with. And I'm very proud of being part of a community that has made incredible advances over the last 40 years to a place, you know, where we now inconceivable when I was a boy thinking about gay marriage and other things that, uh, that now we take for granted in certainly the UK and the US. But I do also feel, Madeline, that for the first time in my life, it's slightly fragile that I think there are all sorts of shifts, societal shifts that mean we could easily return to that period if we're not careful. And I love the idea when I read the script of being able to make a film that may just may contribute to the debate, the bigger debate about where we are now. And that can only happen really if we get a lot of young people to see the film because the young uh, young generation at the moment for me are the most unprejudiced of all generations ever born. And if they can become ambassadors for why we need to keep moving forward and never return to a world where you aren't free to be yourself, then I think that will be a powerful piece of advocacy that I uh, would be very proud if my policeman even contributed to it in the tiniest possible way. And you had a fantastic cast to work with, especially David, Harry and Emma, who are at the center of the film's main events. What are your thoughts on how the three of them fleshed out the dynamics between Patrick, Tom and Marion? Yeah, I agree. It could have it could have all not worked if the three of them didn't get on and didn't bring so much to the project themselves. Uh, David, I've worked with many times before, and I knew he was this amazing collaborator and would be great working with uh, Harry and Emma. Harry came originally uh, to me. Uh, we didn't reach out to him at all. He came saying that he He'd read the script uh, that had been circulated within his agency and that they said he was very interested in this being part of his evolution as a screen actor. And when I met him, it was very clear he understood Tom, um, very clear he could bring something to that role, similarly with Emma. So I would be uh, extraordinary understanding of how um, they wanted to be part of the message of the film as well as playing the characters within the film and what they could bring. So I was very blessed, I have to say, by having those three younger actors lead that and then when we added the three older actors to them because we were shooting them at the very end of the film that was um quite an easy process as well i it, it's very rare a director is in a usually a director is in a room trying to convince an actor to be in a film so it's lovely to be in a room where the actor is telling you why they want to be in the film it's unusual and very welcome <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Michael. Congrats on the film again, and I wish you the best. Pleasure. Thanks ever so much, Madeline. Bye-bye.